Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of my Hits and Shit series. If you are new here, these are essentially all the products that I have absolutely loved and hated over the past three to four weeks. So this episode today is the October version and I have been kinda savage. Things just were not working out for me this month, let me tell you. <laughs> so if you are interested in learning about all of the products that I have loved and hated throughout the month of October, then please keep on watching. Alright, so I'm gonna do my loves first as per the usual, so the products that have been major hits for me over the past four weeks. First up, I have this brow pomade by Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is her dip brow pomade. This is in the color chocolate. Obviously, this is a very old product. Um, it's been around for ages. The entire world is basically obsessed with this one. For a long period of time there, I just hadn't picked it up again. I hadn't been using it. But for some reason, and the month of October, it was like opening all of the pomade heavens in front of me. <laughs> I have just been using this every single day. I'm loving how easy it is with this one to get a really perfect fine thin tail on the outer corners of my brows. It's really easy to draw in tiny little hairs with. Just really easy to really shape the brows. Sometimes powders, I mean powders are still my go-to favorite formula for doing my brows because well it's quick and simple and I'm kind of lazy <laughs> but yeah I've just been loving having like really like zoom zoom eyebrows this month for whatever reason <laughs> also another brow product that I have literally been reaching for every single day as well this is the benefit foolproof brow powder this is a new release from them it comes in three different shades and at the front of the compact here there's like a lighter brown shade and at the back there's like a darker brown shade you're meant to kind of follow that format. So use the lighter color through the head and the darker color through the tail. Gotta be honest with you, I'm not really one for following rules and I just kind of use it however the hell I feel like. But I have been traveling heaps over the last four weeks and I have been taking this with me everywhere. I chuck it in my makeup bag and it takes two seconds to do my brows with. I don't use a little brush that it comes with. It's like a sponge applicator and I don't know. I find that using that makes it look really messy. It's got a little spoolie in there, which is good. But yeah, I've just been using it with a regular angled brush or flat definer brush. And it's just like bang, 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 done. And I'm out the door. Also the perfect cool tone color. I bitch about this all the time. I have such a hard time getting brow colors that actually match my, um, you know, like cooler tone, really dark hair color. They're all way too red. And this one, it's just perfect. It's honestly a really, really good, easy to use brow product. If you struggle doing your brows or you're sick of your brows taking you forever, give this one a go. Next up, I've I've got a new mascara favorite and I was a little on the fence about this one because it does actually eventually transfer after probably about eight hours I do get sort of some sort of deeper shadowing um, you know on the lids of my eyes but it's honestly worth it because this makes my eyelashes look honestly insane. It makes them so long, fluffy, it gives them so much volume. It absolutely completely transforms them. I'm not very lucky in the lash department. Not really. <laughs> my eyelashes are quite thin. They're quite straight. They're, um, you know, they're just a nightmare to deal with, really. But yeah, this mascara has had them looking really fluffy and long and thick and just absolutely nothing like they normally look like. <laughs> I've actually got three new favorite setting powders this month. Is that, is that a little too over the top? Oh well, who cares? <laughs> First up, the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Setting Powder. Absolutely gorgeous. Translucent, loose setting powder. Really, really smooths the skin. Really perfects everything. Really just has you looking... Like you're a lot more perfect in Photoshop than you really are. <laughs> it's really finely milled, so it's got a really gorgeous, silky smooth texture. And like after you've applied and you kind of run your hands over your face, you're like, oh, my face feels so soft. <laughs> it lasts really well on my oily skin. I don't find that it, you know, causes separation or breaking up of my foundations when worn over the top. Just a really, really good, solid, loose, translucent setting powder. Another setting powder that I've fallen in love with this month is the NYX Set It and Don't Fret It. This is their matte finishing powder. This one does come in different colors. This one's actually a mineral finishing powder. So it does contain like a tiny little bit of pigment or a little bit of color, but I haven't found that it really alters or adjusts anything on my face too much. Really finely milled, feels really beautifully smooth, lasts a really long time during the day. It's great to set with initially, it's great to touch up with. Obviously being a loose powder, it's a little bit difficult to travel with and that'll lead us into the next one. But um, yeah, I, the funny part about this powder is I've actually had this sitting around here in my makeup room for... When did I go to the Face Awards with NYX? Last year? Year before? It was a while ago and it's just been sitting here ever since I'd never tested it. Finally broke it out. Oh my gosh, I'd been totally missing out. This is an amazing setting powder and it's drugstore, it's affordable, it's gorgeous. And then the final setting powder is actually this one by Fenty Beauty. This is their Invisi Matte Blotting Powder in the color Universal. It is a completely translucent uh, blotting, mattifying, perfecting everything powder. This one is in a pressed format, so it's just so great for traveling with. And like I said, I've been traveling so much. Like, I swear to you, the people at the airport are like, hi, Nikia. 
nice to see you. I haven't seen you in like a couple days. Nice to see you again. <laughs> but this one's just been a huge lifesaver for me. I just chuck it in my bag. I touch up with it on the go. A lot of uh, translucent, especially translucent powders that have sort of more like a white kind of talky color to them, really, really get cakey on my skin. I find that when I touch up with them on the go, it just leaves my skin like textured and just not looking cute, but this one works really, really well. You can touch up with it literally like 15 times in a day and you don't get cakey at all. You don't get texture. You don't get like that crinkly appearance to the skin. Looks gorgeous and it really absorbs all the oils. Like I honestly don't have enough good things to say about it. The funny part about this powder is when I did my original Fenty Beauty review, and I will link that one down below for you if you haven't seen it yet, but when I did my original review, you know, I used the powder and I was like, yeah, it's a really nice powder, but I wouldn't go, you know, like jumping through a burning ring of fire to get it if you're happy with the setting powder that you've got. Well, now after actually using it and traveling with it and just getting to know the product even better and just using it for touch-ups, I actually think it's worth risking your life for. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next up I've got a nail polish and it's actually the color that I'm wearing on my nails right now. And you guys have been seeing this color heaps in probably like my last five, six, seven videos. I've just been wearing it constantly. This is the Sally Hansen Complete Salon Manicure Nail Polish in the color Marrakesh from a Rose, number 711. This is from their spring collection, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's just the most beautiful, perfect, bright baby pink ever. It's not patchy or streaky. It's really easy to apply. You only need two coats and you get full color opacity. It's honestly amazing and it's so affordable. Like Sally Hansen is a drugstore brand, super affordable. I've just been getting compliment after compliment after compliment on my nails, Nikia. What are you wearing? What is that color? Guys, it's been this one and it's so good. Doesn't chip, it lasts ages. I reckon I can get about five to seven days wear out of this one without having to fix any chips and stuff, which is actually a really long time for me. So yes, Ooh, I love this one. And then finally, I've got two palettes that I've just been next level obsessing over. Firstly, the Tarte Shape, I think is it the Clay Play Face Shaping Palette? Oh, and I do actually have a full video on this one showing you guys my favorite ways to use it. But honestly, this palette is so amazing. So this is pretty well a palette that you can do basically anything with. You can set your foundation. You can use it as a foundation. You can use it for your eyes. You can use it for your brows. You can use it to contour, to bronze. You can do really, really dark, smoky eyes. You can do really natural, soft, everyday eyes. Honestly, it's just one of the most versatile palettes I have ever owned. It's just, it's gorgeous and it's not even that expensive. Oh, I'm so glad that I found her. And then finally, my last favorite for the month, and I'm probably going to get ripped to shreds again. You should have seen the reaction on my video tutorial and review of this palette. Holy hell. So this is the Morphe 3502 Second Nature Palette, right? It is the most stunningly gorgeous warm tone palette ever. I am absolutely ridiculously head over heels in love with this one. And I shared those opinions in a video recently and wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to repeat again as per what I did in that video. Guys, I'm not working with Morphe. I am not sponsored by Morphe whenever a video is sponsored. It's 100% disclosure. I've never changed anything like that. I'm not trying to suck up Morphe's ass. I don't know why a lot of people thought that. You guys, this palette is freaking amazing. It's affordable. It's pigmented. It blends beautifully. I've been reaching for it every single day. It is without a doubt, without fail, at this point in time, my most loved, most favorite, affordable warm neutral eyeshadow palette it's gorgeous it is absolutely gorgeous it swatches like a dream it wears like a dream so crazy pigmented like ridiculous you know what I'm gonna show you let's do some little finger swatches so look I'll do that I'll do that I'll do that um, what will we do maybe let's do the black everyone always loves to see the black are you kidding? There's no BS, guys. This palette is honestly amazing. I've been using it every single day. I love it. I think that you need it. As I said in the original review video, obviously, if you hate warm tones, you're not going to like it. Oh, look at that. Like, how can you tell me that I am bullshitting and that that's not really amazing quality? Like, are you kidding? Oh, look! <laughs> but yes, like I said in the video, if you're not into warm tone palettes, you're not going to be head over heels in love with it because you don't like warm tones. That is fairly obvious in my opinion. But if you love warm tones and you want a really good bomb, really good quality eyeshadow palette, I would check this one out. It's so good. All right, so that's it for the hits. Moving on to the shits and the products that... Just really, they broke my heart this month, really. They really did. <laughs> First up, I've got this foundation by Bourjois. This is the Bourjois Healthy Mix uh, Anti-Fatigue Foundation. This one's a 16-hour wear foundation. 
Unfortunately, this does nothing but make my skin look like the surface of the moon. Yeah, it really increased texture for me. It really made my skin look rough. It settled into fine lines. It settled into pores. I, I didn't look less tired. I just, I feel like I looked really aged when I wore it. Unfortunately, not a love for me. I know that there are a bunch of other bourgeois foundations and I will be testing those as well. But yeah. I'm sad, but no. Next up, I've got this powder highlighter by Ciate. This is their, was it their Glow 2? Yes, Glow 2 highlighter powder in the color Star Burst. Um, I had a couple of issues with this one. I felt like you really just got basically zero pigmentation. You just really, like, it looks nice when you swatch it on your finger, but then once you use it on your skin, like, it just... It just doesn't really show up. It's not nice. Um, so yeah, there was that issue. But the main issue that I had with this one was that it's just too chunky and gritty and like really sort of chunky glittery glitters. And I just found that it really emphasized the texture on my face even more. Kind of like the Bourjois Foundation did. It just, wherever I applied this, I just felt like it looked rough and textured and... I'm not down for textured skin. I've already got textured skin. I don't need anything in my life that's going to make it worse. No. So yeah, not a love for me. Another... I'm really peeved about this product. I was so excited to try it. This is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Radiance Drop. Look, it's even gone back in the box. I only used it once. I only used it once. So this one's meant to be a liquid highlighter, uh, illuminator, whatever you want to call it. The main issue that I had with this one is it's just basically oil. It's really runny. It's really oily. And once it's applied to the skin, you just cannot see it at all. It leaves quite an oily residue. So, you know, not only, like, it's not appropriate for my oily skin anyway, but I just found once I applied it, like... Where did it go? My hand looks no different to what it looked before. It, it just disappears. Kudos to how good it smells, Tarte. It smells really, really good, but honestly, for the price and... No, no. I'm not going to pay that much for a liquid illuminator and not be able to see it on the skin. I just... I can't get behind that. And then lastly, and I'm probably going to get into so much trouble for this, Huda Beauty Lashes. <laughs> oh... I am annoyed about this because I've been excited my entire life to use these. And, you know, there's no denying the fact that they are beautiful, beautiful, like, high-quality eyelashes. Don't get me wrong. My issue with them is the size. Okay, where do we begin? For starters, I've got incredibly thick bands. I don't know if you can see that there. They're incredibly thick. I'm sure I've explained this to you guys before, but I do have quite sensitive, watery, dry eyes. My eyes are a nightmare on the best of days to deal with. But if you put something as thick as this on my eye, let me tell you. They are just going to crack it and I'm only going to get about 20 minutes then I'm going to have to remove it. The other issue with them is the sheer size of the entire eyelash. Like look how massive these are and I'll kind of show you but if I was to put these on, well it's kind of hard because I've already got lashes on. Look at that. Mm-hmm. And I get that Hood is from the UAE and, you know, perhaps this line is targeted towards those really beautiful Arabic women that have got gorgeous, huge eyes. But for those of us who have got regular sized eyes, regular face shapes, we're not models, we're not, you know, amazing. You just, you can't use them and they're so expensive. They're so expensive. So I am very upset about this because, you know, they're beautiful quality. They're gorgeous. The actual pattern design layout, everything about them, stunning. Love the packaging, love all of that. They're just way too big, thick, chunky and uncomfortable for me to be able to use. Therefore, they've been a waste of money for me. Oh, don't hate me guys. So yes, that brings me to the end of the video today, guys. Please let me know your thoughts on all of the products that have made my love list and hate list for the month of October. I want to know what products you have been obsessing over and what products you have been loving and hating, actually. Actually, yes, leave me a comment down below and let me know about a product that you have tried recently that you absolutely hated. I would love to know what it is. I would just love it. So yes, I hope this video is helpful. If you've got any questions, requests, anything like that, please, as always, leave them in the comment section down below. I love you guys so much and I will catch you in my next one.